moved from the Auburn game, but obviously a uh, great win over uh, you know, the number eight ranked country, team in the country at the time. But there was incredible atmosphere and great fan support. So uh, to be four and two and 22 in the country uh, at the halfway point, I thought there was a lot of positive momentum heading into our bye week uh, for our kids. Uh, the focus of that week was to make sure that they recharge mentally, uh, rehab physically, focused on their academics, and uh, got a little bit of time to get around their families. Two Sundays ago, we had a normal practice. Uh, Monday was a player's day off, and we did an exhaustive self-scout. Well, you're still a shirt. It's a big time. Um, on offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we practiced uh, with a focus on special teams, fundamentals, and technique, and then a non-travel team uh, development, uh, doing seven-on-seven seven and team drills there. Then on Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday morning, uh, we worked ahead for our LSU game plan. On Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the players were off. Uh, Thursday and Friday, the coaches hit the road uh, recruiting. And then during that two-day time period, hit 108 schools, uh, attended 20 games, and were in nine different states. So I thought the recruiting staff did a real good job putting the play together. Um, got all of us out there, saw a lot of great players, saw a lot of great football. You know, in state and in our footprint in our national area. So we're, we're real fired up about that for the recruiting part. And then this past Sunday, I went back to our normal practice with a focus on LSU uh, because we had a little bit of time to, to work ahead. Uh, going back to the Auburn week, uh, just to revisit because I don't think we had a chance to discuss it here as a group. Our offensive player of the game for, for Auburn was Nick Fitzgerald. Uh, the offensive scout of the game was running back Robert Rivers. Uh, the defensive players, co-players of the game uh, were John Abram and Montez Sweat. The defensive scout team player of the week uh, was Nathaniel Watson. Uh, the special teams player of the game was Chris Rayford. And the special team scout of the week uh, was Sherman Timms. Okay? Uh, two weeks ago, our student athletes of the week were Shamar Kilby Lane and Marquis Spencer. And there were none for this past week because it was fall break. Uh, from an injury standpoint, making sure we're updated there. On the offensive side of the ball, you know, Keith Mixon got a little bit of an ankle. He's day to day, but we're, we're uh, you know, completely optimistic that he'll be ready to go for the game. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, Stephen Adagoki, uh, day to day with a lower body. Uh, Brian Cole, day to day with an upper body. And then Jamal Peters practiced on Sunday. Uh, he's day to day, but we're very confident uh, with him as well. Uh, so those are our injuries for this week. Uh, moving ahead to. LSU, obviously led by head coach Ed Ogeron, 21-7 uh, this time there, currently ranked number five in the country, coming off of a win, a, a very, very impressive win over number two ranked Georgia, 6-1 uh, and one overall in the season, 3-1 and one in the SEC. Uh, LSU has won 21 straight home games in the month of October, so obviously that's very impressive. And uh, under coach Ogeron's guidance, they're 12-0 in SEC games when scoring at least 20 points. And uh, this is their homecoming game. So uh, we'll be a very raucous, uh, intense, uh, you know, very exciting atmosphere. So we're, we're, we're fired up for that. On the offensive side of the ball, the, the coordinator who coaches the quarterbacks is Steve Ems Emziger, a mix of pro style and spread, uh, averaging 32 points a game, uh, 202 rushing, uh, 202 passing, so a very good balance. Uh, quarterback Joe Burrow, transfer from Ohio State, uh, doing a real nice job for him. Uh, you know, kind of real competitive guy, has a lot of moxie to him, a lot of confidence, playing with a lot of leadership. Uh, 1,415 yards passing, six touchdowns, and, uh, you know, was really instrumental in, in that, that win over Georgia. Uh, the two running backs that they play the most, uh, Nick Brossett, very quick and explosive, and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, very patient with an excellent burst. And the wide receiver, Justin Jefferson, versatile, blocks, screens, uh, vertical pass game, uh, makes a lot of plays on contested balls in the air. And obviously a very, very big, if you look at their front uh, front five, uh, physically imposing group. So uh, going to be a, a big challenge for our, for our defense. On the, uh, their defense, uh, led by co coordinator Dave Aranda, who in coaching circles uh, you know, is viewed as one of the top and brightest uh, defensive minds in, in, in the country. Uh, you know, they're a mix of three and four down, playing one high and two high zones, uh, bringing good pressure there, you know, nationally ranked. Uh, number eight in turnovers, having created 15, and uh, currently 17th in the country in scoring defense, allowing just just about 17 points a game. I thought it was interesting that uh, there are seven teams in the SEC right now allow, allowing less than 20 points a game, so that's that's pretty impressive. Other top players, number, nine, number 90, Rashard Lawrence, 25 tackles, three and a half for loss, very quick, very strong hands, uh, you know, kind of very, you know, physically imposing, 
uh, at the point of attack. Uh, the linebacker, uh, number six, Jacob Phillips, uh, 43 tackles, three tackles for loss, uh, one interception, plays hard, always around the ball. Uh, number 40, uh, number nine, Grant Delpit, uh, number 29, Greedy Williams. You go on down the line and you kind of look at some of the, the rankings that a lot of those guys are ranked at or near the top uh, of the NFL draft. Um, evaluations for the upcoming year. So 6 and 40 at the linebacking core, uh, 9 and 29 on the back end, and then obviously number 90. And it's not limited to him. They're a very, very stout physical defense. Uh, special teams are coordinated by Greg McMahon. Uh, you know, the accuracy limits some of the returns. You know, on kickoff coverage, they're 88% touchbacks, uh, 17 for 19 on field goals, 5 for 5 against Georgia, and a 42 yard game winner against Auburn. Top players, uh, 36, Cole Tracy, the place kicker. Talked about him. Uh, Avery Aikens, uh, 41 of 47 touchbacks on kickoffs. And then Todd Harris is a core special teams player. He shows up on a lot of their units, and he's doing a really, really nice job for them. You know, our key is a victory for the game. Uh, we're going to need to be able to control the controllable, which is our attitude, our effort, and our execution. Uh, expecting a lot of crowd noise. We'll be working on that this week. Uh, tough to simulate, but we're going to do our best. Going to be their homecoming. You know, kind of all those uh, circumstances that, that are going to force a tremendous amount of uh, focus from us. We're going to need a great week of practice to earn a right uh, to take the field with confidence. We'll have to play with fanatical effort and surgical precision uh, to beat another uh, top you know, ranked team in the country. You know, one play at a time in championship standard. And as always, you know, explosive plays and turnover margin will play a huge factor uh, in deciding the outcome of the game, as well as the run game, stopping the run you know, third down in the red zone. And you kind of look at some of the statistics and you know, comparing the two teams. Uh, scoring offense, both teams averaging right around 32 points a game. Uh, scoring defense, we're leading the country. And the conference giving up 12. They're right at about 17. Uh, we're leading the country, or I'm sorry, leading the conference in a rushing offense. Uh, they're six, averaging 200 a game. Rushing defense, we're second. They're fifth. So both teams doing a real nice job there. Third down in conversions, uh, we're second in the conference offensively. Uh, you know, and then defensively, we're third, giving up only 26% and they're giving up right around 35%, so that's a real good challenge there. And then looking on the other side, uh, turnover margin, uh, they're second in the conference. They are plus nine. Uh, we're fifth in the conference, plus three. And then red zone offense, we're, they're first, and we're third. So all those critical factors, uh, you know, it's a, it's a uh, kind of you know, interesting to see that we're kind of sitting right, right in the same area in all those statistical categories. So fire up for the challenge. Uh, kids are excited. A lot of positive momentum, as I mentioned before. And, uh, you know, a lot of great football in front of us. So, any questions? Questions? We'll get a mic, T. Hey, Joe. Uh, the, the penalties were kind of a pretty big issue with the last two road <laughs> games at Kentucky yep. and against State. And things. How mindful are you all of that going into this game? Is that a point of emphasis? Uh, what's, I guess, how much have you focused on something like that going into an atmosphere like we'll be in Saturday night? Certainly the pre-snap penalties are the biggest focus there. I think that... The, uh, you know, the 16 uh, at Kentucky, I think we've got that pretty good and cleaned up, you know, the past few weeks. Um, you know, we got 40 overall for the season, so we're, we're trending in the right direction. But uh, with, the, with the crowd noise and the atmosphere and the snap count and things like that, that's certainly something we're going to be mindful of. I think we've got the, the post-snap nonsense, you know, addressed and cleaned up, and the penalties that we've seen have been more, you know, between the whistles as, as opposed to before or after. So something we'll continue to work on. Uh, against Georgia, uh, LSU went for it on fourth down uh, a lot, at least significantly more than they normally do. In those situations, what did you see out of the offense there, and how does that kind of change how they go about things since they've shown they can move the chains on fourth? Yeah, I, I think they've got a lot of confidence in their run game right now. Uh, I think obviously both backs are on a great pad level. Um, you know, they fall forward, and I, I, I think it's really representative of you know how they're playing a, a, as a whole right now with a ton of confidence. Uh, you know, and, and are playing playing to win rather than uh, trying not to lose. So I think it, uh, you know, it's just something kind of like we went for it, you know, a couple times there on fourth. Did you want to show confidence in your kids and the ability to make a play? And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Coach O and you know, their team were playing with that kind of confidence right now. Mississippi State had a lot of success against LSU last year. Did you and your staff look at that and take anything from that film to end your, in, enter into your game plan for this week? Yeah, I mean, we always, you know, look at, Look at it because of personnel matchups and things like that, and kind of go back. Uh, in the same way, we look at it with the, you 
know, that, that it was a was 35 to 7 or 37 to 7 last year. You, you kind of take it all with a grain of salt because it's a different year and a different team, just like, you know, looking at the Auburn game from last year was, you know, 49 10 in the wrong direction. So, certainly from a schematic standpoint, is there anything that we can do that's, uh, um, you know, a, a positive factor for our game plan, but probably more personnel than anything? Uh, defense, th those guys are, are really talented, but they've had a lot of different defensive coordinators over the years. What's Mesh so well with Coach Shoup and those guys to allow them to be so effective so early on. Yeah, I think it, it's a mix of uh, experience. You know, a lot of guys on that side of the ball that have played, you know, a bunch of snaps at a high level. I think we've got a lot of talent, and uh, I think Coach Shoup and, and the staff have done a good job putting a uh, play in the place for them to be successful and you know making good calls at critical times in the game. On those same lines, one player in particular, Kobe Jones. What has his development been in the? On the defensive side, he was kind of Johnny on the spot getting that football in the end zone. He sure was. I think Kobe's a guy that uh, you know, Coach Baker and the defensive staff are really excited about because not only does he um, possess a lot of physical tools uh, that are required to be successful in this conference and at this level, but he's a student of the game, high IQ, you know, tremendous fundamentals and technique, and, and always does it the way Coach Baker you know, instructs him to do so. He, so he very rarely finds himself in the wrong position you know, in making an effort play like that. You know, I think it speaks volumes for what Kobe's done, you know, kind of biding his time behind some very, very talented guys. But he's got a, a very bright future. You've never gone up against David Rainbow, have you? Uh, I've gone up against his style of defense. He, he left Wisconsin the year before we played him in the Big Ten Championship game. I don't think they changed scheme very much, but I guess to answer your question, no, I'm not called Yeah, I mean, well, what about his scheme stands out and, and makes him different? Cause it, it, he's proven that he doesn't depend on players. He's got a good scheme to back it up. No, he, I, I think a, a, a thing that a lot of uh, you know, top-notch defensive coordinators across the country, you know, like Dave Aranda, uh, in their schemes is they, they understand how an offense is attempting to attack them and why and works to take those things away, but at the same time combines that with a bunch of aggressiveness where, where they're uh, attempting to force the hand of the offense. So they know, you know, based on what they run, how people are going to attack them and have a bunch of good counter punches of, you know, if they're going to do this, this is what we go to. So I'd say it's a combination of aggressiveness, scheme, and uh, in-game adjustments that he does a really, really nice job of. There's a there's a lore about playing in Death Valley on a Saturday night. What have you heard about that? What are you expecting uh, for your first trip down there? I'm assuming it's your first trip. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited that they got the, the line markers marked off every five yards. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> you don't see that very often. I mean, they got a tiger down there. That's pretty neat. Uh, but I, I hear. I mean, I mean, to, to me, more than anything, you know, this is you know the the great thing about college football is, is the the uh, the passion of the fan bases, particularly in this conference, and I hear. You know, they're as good as any, and they get fired up, and they get after you, and, uh, you know, they're into the game, and they're going to make a challenging atmosphere. So that's, you know, I, th I think that's the things I'm most excited for. Anything else? Just about the conference in the ago, you halfway through your first season here, I know, but what, what things in this conference have impressed you so far in the three games you played and maybe some of the observations you've had and maybe some of the other games you've been able to watch? And... Yeah, everything has impressed me. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of been as advertised. You need to talk about, you know, you know two things you probably sit here and be saying. It's, uh, maybe not. But uh, it's, it's a line of scrimmage football league, uh, and, it, and it, the margin of error is slim. And I, I think when you look at the – results on a weekly basis, and maybe not the wins and losses as much as uh, point differential in the games, that I think there's tremendous parity in this league, that on a weekly basis, if you don't prepare well and you don't come out and play hard and you don't execute at the highest level, you know, that any team can upset any team or beat any team, and I, and I think that, you know, that's shown across the board for six weeks, so uh, you better be on your A game, there are no off weeks, that, that every team can you know, come out on a given Saturday, and you know, you know, upset anybody. Guard to guard, your offensive line is probably as good as anybody's in the nation. How much of that is individual skill in each position, or do they work particularly well together? Yeah, I think, you know, when you have a center like Elton, you know, you know, he's able to make the calls and kind of get everyone on the same page. You know, and you got Daryl and you got Dion and the other guys are something through there. I think the, the core, uh, you know, kind of sets the tone. 
And uh, I think those guys have done a great job with their physicality and you know, mentality, and you know, particularly you know last week you know, set the tone for the game. All right, Sir? thank you.